Good morning. Welcome back. This is Daybreak on Citizen Television. Thank you for staying with us. The hashtag on Twitter is Daybreak. The SMS code is double two four double two at Citizen TV Kenya and at Ayub Abdikadi. Later, we sample some of your feedback here on the broadcast. With me in studio on my immediate right is the South Mugirango Member of Parliament, Silvana Susoro, who as well is the Majority Whip at the National Assembly. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for your time. At the center is the Senator Makwene County, Dan Manzo. Thank you for your time. Good morning to you. Good morning. And Geoffrey Ruku is the Member of Parliament representing Mbere North. Thank you for your time. Thank you. We'll shortly be joined by the Wajir South Member of Parliament, Lomeka Mohamed Ado, who is an ODM party member here on the broadcast as we focus on some of the major headlines on the publications. Beginning with the Daily Nation, the front page says, Housing levy unstoppable. President William Ruto yesterday told of the opposition in the county of Busia, and he said that the plan to deduct the workers' salaries to fund the, con the construction of affordable housing he is on course urging lawmakers to pass the Finance Bill 2023. On the front page of the Standard newspaper, tax pressure piles, President William Ruto faces a buildup of political hurricane in the coming days from threats of street protest by the opposition, which is resurging. According to the paper, a former president who has refused to leave the political stage and Kenyans who have rejected new tax measures few days to reading of the budget financial year 2023-2024. I begin with you, Senator Dan Manzo on uh, this, uh, the, the content of uh, the Finance Bill 2023. And now the cloud seems to be largely hanging around the housing levy as proposed in the bill. Is it raising more questions than answers, listening to what P.S. Charles Hinga told the country on Wednesday last week? Yes, I want to say there are more questions than answers. First of all, the housing levy, together with the Finance Bill, which is seeking to increase taxes, all of them are taxes. At the end of the day, on 100% uh, scale, you will find that, uh, like in the case of the, the house levy, the, the employer is detected 3%, deducted 3%, and the employee is also deducted 3%. That is actually 6%. So, so you, then you know, pay as you want. It's 30%. So you're already at 36% and you are on the same pay slip. And if you go on NSSF, NHIF, and other deductions, most salaries are ending up are you know being detected 40 to almost 50 percent uh, unfortunately um you know taxes um, unfair taxes and uh, you, you know taxes which are excessive have brought down governments in the past in history so it's, it's something we need to discuss very well and unfortunately parliament is just a rubber stamp my good friend osoro here is just a rubber stamp uh this finance bill is going to is going to, to the National Assembly, it's not coming to Senate, although it's, it's, it's a matter of interpretation. It takes care of, uh, there is a lot which is going to deal with the county governments. But uh, as it is now, it's going to be dealt with the National Assembly. So uh, Honorable Osoro is the chief, we will mobilize all members he can get uh, so that he can make sure he has enough numbers to, to pass this law as dictated by the state. Uh, and then uh, Kenyans will, will have to go through that. I mean, it's, uh, it's one of the dictatorial tendencies. Uh, there are many other ways um, one can mitigate this. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we have a lot of funds in the country. We have a lot of monies as a nation. We have a lot of wealth as a nation. But most money is uh, sipped up by corruption. If we had sealed uh, the corruption loopholes, uh, we've, we've got uh, two, about two billion shillings get lost every day through corruption. All that money is you don't need to tax people. We have enough money. We have enough investments okay. in the country. We have a lot of goodwill from the international investors. So if you run a good government, I believe Kenya will prosper. Okay. When you talk about parliament being a rubber stamp, and briefly, because I want to go to the majority whip, uh, that is a, a wholesale blanket statement. You are also a parliamentarian. I mean, do you mean that parliament lacks independence? It's, it's none now. That was the original um, idea of... Um, of the Constitution, and that's what it should be. Just like in the US, you see now uh, the pre President Joe Biden has uh, minority members of parliament, and that's why they've lost the speakership. But we have not seen him go into the other side of, uh, of, uh, of the Republicans to look for, to woo members of the Senate or members of the Congress to their side so that uh, they can win, you know, government uh, bills. People vote with their conscience. Uh, but in Kenya, that's not the case. I have had several experiences, even in the Senate, uh, that, that uh, 
you, even the house is taking a certain direction okay. on a matter. Even the house committees have given certain recommendations mm -hmm. or proposes certain amendments. And all of a sudden, the leaders of majorities and the whips will say, we are sorry, okay. we have to drop these amendments. Uh, there are directions from above, this is the way to vote. Okay. And everybody will be lobbied and lobbied through all manner of beans, and eventually, you know, the government must take the way. Okay. The government must also accept to lose and must allow members of parliament, national assembly this time, all right. uh, to, 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 to represent the people and vote as for the wishes of the people. Okay, and Joe Biden and the Republican leader <coughs> agreed, on the prudent, agreed on the prudent use of cutting down on expenditure, some of the agreed issues before that uh, comes up, and that's in regard to the debt. Yes, there's the a time, States. yeah, there's a time, you know, Government and opposition must talk right. for the benefit of the nation. At the best interest of the country. For the benefit of the nation. Hang on. Um, Honorable Osoro, 18 days ago, you said that the Finance Bill 2023 will pass in Parliament. Why? Uh, thank you very much. I, it is true I said uh, uh, that uh, statement. Number one, from where I sit, I am uh, the majority whip of the National Assembly and my responsibility is to push government business in the house. And I think that should be clear to every Kenyan that when I speak in the National Assembly, I speak on behalf of the national government because I am part of the team that formed the UDA government or Kenya Kwanzaa government, mm -hmm. and I can't run away from my government. And I mean, really, it, it should, people should understand me from where I sit. Um, but again, besides that, the housing or rather the finance bill is a well thought idea although it's in process we are already collecting we are still collecting views mm -hmm. uh, you know from all the stakeholders it is not really cast in stone that you know we will not amend some proposals that have been raised by different stakeholders we will amend and that is why this discussion in this country is very okay I mean, when you hear uh, different se sectors proposing some changes and everything we are not going to throw them under the bus it is part of the process, you don't just, I mean, the government proposed. And then there is a process of public participation where people are invited to bring their views. Then we'll sit down and review their views, amend where possible, then present before the house. But I said, at the point of presenting that bill in the floor of the house, it will pass because that is my responsibility and I'll make sure it passes. And it's not really about rubber stamp because before even we present this bill to the, even before we convince, I managed to convince my members in the floor of the house to pass the bill, okay. I am part of the entire process of forming that bill. So I fully understand it. And now it is my responsibility to convince the members of parliament to agree with me so that they pass the bill. And I only said, I expressed my views that from where I sit, as a leader in the National Assembly, I'll convince my colleagues to agree with me and pass the bill. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, number one, there are so many lies that are really being peddled about the finance bill, and really it's very unfortunate. And my learned colleague and senior, who is a very close friend of mine, by the way, he's a very close <laughs> friend of mine of uh, many years, um, is misleading the, uh, the public that um, the housing fund, because they have really zeroed this whole discussion to the housing levy. Yet, the finance bill has got so many things. It talks about the low cost of maize or corn and such. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there is zero rating, you know, of uh, production. Mm -hmm. It talks about uh, uh, farm inputs and such being exempted from tax. Nobody is talking about that. He's talking about the income tax reduction uh, on rent income uh, at the point of uh, from 10% to 7.5%. Nobody is talking about that. We are all talking about the housing fund. But even as we limit ourselves to the housing fund, it is not a tax. Okay. Because the question I'll pose to my colleagues, no. even as we discuss, mm -hmm. we all get deducted NHIF, which is mandatory as employees. But the entire year, I haven't, of course, by God's grace, I've not been sick the entire year. But my deduction is helping somebody somewhere get medical care. Okay. <clears throat> w w that's well noted. And you said it's not a tax. It is not a tax. But anything that comes before Parliament, if passed, becomes legally binding. So what's, a, what's, what's in your view, what's the description of a tax? The description of a tax, in my view, is a deduction towards government revenue. Okay that you have no direct benefit over 
For example, when I get to pay VAT and it builds a road in Embu, where Honor Boroko comes from, for example, I do not come from Embu. It benefits uh, uh, Honor Boroko and his people. All right. But the housing fund or the housing levy, when I am deducted, I am a direct beneficiary. And there is an exit strategy. There is an exit clause that after seven years, I can withdraw. Okay. It is simply a pool of resources to jumpstart a program that we want okay. to do in terms of housing. I'll, I'll come to the NSSF and the NHIF deductions, uh, but still some questions that uh, here need clarity. And uh, I need your request before I go to the two members of parliament who are waiting over there. Um, explain to me the infrastructure in place to handle the money that will be collected over the seven year period. That's question number one. The rules for managing the fund. Two, the fund and where the housing levy will be deposited. Three, and many Kenyans also want to know the interest on their deposits and what criteria will be used in the allocation of the houses. Four questions. I'll start with question one. Number one, this housing levy was passed in the previous, it was brought before parliament in our previous time where uh, <laughs> Senator Manzo sat, because we were with him when it was brought and before. And petitioned in court. It, it, and petitioned, of course, in court, on the element of voluntary. Because at that point, people sought to have it voluntary. Mm -hmm. And of course, in the voluntary element, we've only been able to raise 1.8 billion. So already there are laid out structures which we are actually trying to redefine. When you get deducted this money, it's very important for Kenyans to know that it's not going to the consolidated account. Mm -hmm. So where is it going? The state. What is going to happen is that we, the amount of money is going to have an administrator. Who will be the administrator? I mean, what, what is the criteria? The, the, what is the architecture for that administration of the funding? Uh, let me start from this point. There is already a competitive procedure of appointing a banker, per se, these commercial banks, as at now, KCB, is in hold of such amount of money, quite independent from the consolidated account of the government. And then there is an administrator. As of now, it is the uh, Britam, you know, uh, the insurance company. And the structure is laid out in the point that when the money hits from the, care, from the deductions, immediately it hits CBK, it leads to a commercial bank, which as I said, it's going to be competitive. Then from there, that money is not directly going to be accessed by a direct source. There is a, a point of an administrator. There is a point of a, a, a board, you know, downwards. The structure is too long and cumbersome before you get to the point of withdrawals and such. Why do we have middle ways or administrators and such? Okay. So that the money can also be placed on, you know, government securities or anything for purposes of, you know, um, uh, growing it even further and such like that as we progress in terms of uh, uh, construction. Okay, well, what, what, what final question. Why then, do you, why, why then do you have such a cumbersome process as you have mentioned? If uh, this money is meant for the housing project, why do you make it so complicated for exactly, purposes? Exactly, because this is, this is, this is an initial, this is, this is a dream. You know, Kenyans have a trust issue. Because, and that is why you raise the issue of NSSF and uh, you know, the other funds, yeah. which are largely controlled by the consolidated account. So this is, Kenyans have a trust issue. We want to delink this. We want to make this money autonomous, that you can access it at will after seven years. Oh, okay. It, it will be very easy for you to access. Okay. And the cumbersome process and the bureaucratic process is not really so hard in terms of the procurement. It's to yield confidence that your money is safe, number one. To also yield confidence to the investor who is coming to build this house, that at least there is a pool of amount of money somewhere that is safe, well kept in some uh, bank and such, which really one can't wake up in the morning and just say, you know, today we want to withdraw this amount of money. Okay. It has got a bureaucratic Come, come back some and uh, the reality of the dream don't fit in one sentence. We'll come more about uh, the people <laughs> of South Mugirango because you are their representative. Honorable Mohamed Ado, are the, is the presentation made by the majority whip satisfactory? And if this bill comes before parliament, now at the committee stage of the national and finance planning of the National Assembly, would you support it? Well, um, 
Thank you very much, Ayub. Um, it is, um, I'm, I'm still studying. I'm still studying it. And I want to keep a very open mind about it all. For the simple reason that the first sovereign of Kenya are the people of Kenya. And when the going gets tough, we must take it upon ourselves to try and help so that our country goes through these tough times. It's happened in other places. It's not something that's happening for the first time in Kenya. Mm -hmm. In Ghana, for example, when they defaulted on some of the loans that they had borrowed, the people had to pay up to save the banks and the country from economic ruin. That said, however, I find a lot of jungle which I am unable to navigate through within the finance bill. Mm -hmm. And top on the list is the housing, housing finance um, bit. Um, it's not been explained properly to the people of Kenya. We are, most of us, in the dark about what it actually entails, and not much communication has been put into it. And I believe if it is shown to me that it is something that is going to be worthwhile and help the people of Kenya, I will support because I think my first allegiance is to the country and the people of Kenya. Okay. Yeah. Honorable Ruko, what's your contribution here? Is the because there are many questions that uh, need answers to, and the Kenyan people deserve satisfactory argument from the government side as to how this will help the country in the long term. The head of state hosted the Prime Minister of Singapore and he said that is a model that we should copy. But, but is, the housing, is the housing problem perhaps an issue that the government wholeheartedly should, uh, I mean, put its entire effort on? And is the presentation made by Charles Hinger, the PS4 housing, satisfactory? I think it is important to tell Kenyans that uh, Kenya is not one of the highly taxed nation because um, tax revenue to GDP of our country is at 14% at the moment. And if you compare the average uh, tax revenue to GDP of other countries, which are more or less at the same level economically with Kenya, is way above the average of about 23%. We are not taxed as people would want to uh, say. And we, we get for what we pay. What we enjoy for what you pay. What's the percentage of taxes in Kenya? I mean, the, the, from the normal pay slip. The tax revenue Kenya. to GDP for our country is 14%. And it is important we, 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 we work towards making it the average, where the average is about 23% in the world of different uh, countries. We have countries whereby we have tax levy to GDP of about 45%, over 30%. In South Africa, in uh, Lesotho, in Botswana, uh, all of them are above uh, 22%. So we, and, and our 14% at the moment, we raised 2.2 trillion uh, uh, Kenya shilling uh, for what we try to do all the payment of debts. And once we pay the debt, you are almost left with nothing. So, uh, and we have to tell Kenyans, there are quite a number of economic uh, or development indicators which are used by different uh, multilateral uh, leading uh, bodies like IMF, World Bank, Africa Development Bank. And that's why the leader of IMF was in the country and he placed the economic model which Kenya or the government is taking. Why? Because they understand the direction which the emerging economies in Africa should take. And one of the uh, directions we should take is to gradually raise our uh, tax revenue uh, to GDP in a gradual manner. And what uh, Kenya Kwanza government is proposing at the moment is that we be able to raise from 14% to 16%. By so doing, we'll be able to go to 2.8 trillion Kenya shilling. And that difference from 2.2 to 2.8 is enough to quite, I mean, to finance a number of uh, development activities, for instance, our our education sector. Okay, but, but we are able okay. to finance our education Hold on, sector. Hold on, because I, I need to get manner. I need to get some there clarity. Is a lot okay. of dilapidation okay. in the in the health, in infrastructure, in education, in security. Okay, how do we finance? This? Thank you. Because we finance our programs through taxes, and uh, I'll play a soundbite of the president on Friday. He was at the Times Tower. You say that we need to tax more. 
in a gradual manner. Okay, hang and on. We are saying Kenyans are no, okay. uh, one of the least uh, tax nations. I'll read you some and, numbers. And these okay, things, okay. You, these things are, are, are available. It's important. You know, the development indicators, different are available anywhere. You can Google the tax level to okay. GDP of a country. Okay, I, I, it's about 14%. I get your point. Compare it with South Africa, okay. with Botswana, okay. with Lesotho, with Norway, with Germany, with Turkey, with all okay. these countries. Okay. You see, we are and, doing, we are quite at the bottom. Thank you. No need for Googling, just the numbers are here, the facts are here, 6% for NSSF deductions. No, 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 That's also, okay. those are not the ratios we're talking about. May, may, I, may I just, please, uh, okay, let me just please, finish the point. No, I, I, I'll finish the point economics. and respond to my I question. I've been in school of economics for six years. Okay, may, may I just finish the point? You want to mislead Kenyans no, no misleading. By, by, by what uh, my brother here, who okay. is a lawyer. And, and here, I'm not a lawyer. Okay. I've uh, been in school of economics for, for, okay. for uh, six years. Allow me so to. I know the parameters okay. which our used to measure. Uh, different Allow me to ask you the question, you'll have the time to respond. Yes. Because uh, we are talking about salaried Kenyans, and that is the, the specificity that the head of state yesterday, yesterday laid an emphasis on. We have 6% for NSSF deductions at the moment in the country, 2.7%, because they are all deductions at the end of the day. And uh, the, the housing levy, therefore, will increase this to 11.7% on salaried Kenyans. How then do you want to increase taxing Kenyans for a narrow tax base at a time when you are taxing Kenyans more, that coming up to 11% of their pay slip? To answer your question, I will put it in context that we have 75% of Kenyans who are salaried who earn less than 50,000 Kenyan shilling every month. We have 97% of Kenyans who are salaried who earn less than 150,000 Kenyan shilling monthly. Today, the mortgage you can get for the cheapest house in the economy is about 11 million Kenyan shilling. For you to be able to get that mortgage and to pay that mortgage every single month at the market rate of about 14%, you'll be required to pay 153,000 every month, meaning 97% of all salaried Kenyans cannot be able to, to own a decent house in our country. Does it mean we are going to condemn all the surrounding Kenyans for years? We have a responsibility as a responsible government to come up with a plan which we can sell to the entire nation and explain it clearly how we are going to ensure Kenya is not going to be a slum in another 15, 20 years. It's, and it, the projection is okay. in another 15 years, we will have more than 3,000 slums everywhere if we don't change the trajectory which we are uh, <coughs> taking in the field, in the market of the housing. Okay. Housing is a major problem in our nation. Your point is noted, your point is noted but, but the government bears the responsibility and with the mandate at the end of the day to address these issues without yes. testing more. And you, you talk about uh, the Kenyans who earn more than 50,000, 100,000. The Kenyan National Bureau of Statistics, here, here unless, is the number. Hang on. And less than 50,000. Okay. Hang on, here is the number. The report by the Kenyan National Bureau of Statistics shows that uh, only 312,000 Kenyans, or 12% 12 of income taxpayers, earn Kenya shillings 100,000 a month. That is the number. And if one were to assume that half of those people earn more than 500,000 people per month, the measure would raise to between 4 billion to 5 billion Kenya shillings. Yet the government wants to tax 35% of Kenyans who earn more than half a million Kenya shillings. I mean, if it gives you 4 to 5 billion Kenya shillings, what's the point? What you're saying is we, especially the members of parliament, who earn more than 500,000 Kenya shillings, is our time, is the time of those who earn more, to, we have something called differential tax regime. Differential tax regime is whereby you pay a tax according to what you earn. The members of parliament, of course, you know, in the past have been avoiding to pay tax, but now we do pay uh, our 30 percent. Members of what? parliament have been avoiding in to the pay past, taxes. in the past, before uh, the same members of parliament was, were not uh, okay. paying a tax, but the moment they pay tax, it's a tutory to pay tax. But what you're saying for those who earn more than 5,000, 500,000 Kenya shillings a month, and is a percentage which is less than two percent of all the salaried uh, Kenyans, okay? So it's our time to pay. 
uh, more. So that those who are not abroad. So that those who are at the bottom of the pyramid. So that the hustlers we talked about okay. during our campaigns Thank you. can benefit from our... There are money. questions, of course, that will answer. Senator, I'll come to you. Honorable Mohammed, I'll come to you. I, I see you have responses. Honorable mm -hmm. Soro, we'll get back <clears> to the discussion <throat> as we proceed with this because there are many issues that need clarity on and you, members of the bicameral parliament, are here to shed more light on the housing levy that the government is uh, at the moment touting for with the president yesterday saying that it is unstoppable. The hashtag on Twitter is daybreak. The SMS code is 22422 at Citizen TV Kenya and at Ayub Abdikadi. We proceed with the discussion after the break here on the broadcast. Stay tuned.